Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Corbis Manar. Um, I uh, am a um, qualified nutritionist. Um, I've been farming pigs for 35 years now. Um, so I've got, uh, I've also got a BSc in agriculture. Um, and I've been mixing my own food and uh, balancing rations for, you know, for since day one. So one of the most commonly asked questions on uh, the 63 Facebook groups uh, in pig farming that I belong to throughout Africa and the world is give us a ration or can I use this ingredient? Can I use that one? And, and um, I always refrain, refrain from answering because it's a it's not a one-liner answer. Um, and usually if somebody asks, can I use bread? They mean, can I only use bread? Uh, there's no one ingredient that can provide all the nutritional needs of any animal, uh, let alone uh, pigs and so on. So I've decided to make this um, ration balancing program and I've made it as little complicated as possible. I've automated most of the calculations. I've brought all the unit standards to the same unit standard, the, the, the requirements and, and the supply of uh, nutrients from uh, ingredients. So we've, we've automated it as much as, as humanly possible. So we also provide six professionally balanced rations, um, which um, you can use straight away. Um, and it covers uh, everything from a creep starter to a weaner, to a grower, a, dry, a, a finisher, dry sow, and or gestating sow, sow and a lactating sows rations, and so on. So um, we also um, have that provide you with the instructional video, which which is this um, in the method to do your own ration balancing, so that if your ingredients change or you run out of one, you can replace it with a different one and still end up with a balanced ration and so on. So let's um, get straight into it. Let me just... Okay, so it's a, sp a spreadsheet and at the top you've got all the, there's 41 different um, ingredients. Uh, they sort of color coded into high energy um, ingredients, high protein ingredients, high fiber ingredients and then your, your minerals and, and uh, amino acids and, and so on. So they all at the top. The whole sheet is protected. All you have to do is to include the, the price of the, the, the um, ingredients that you have chosen. You, can, you will get a package of 14 um, ingredients that cover all the nutritional groups and that you can choose out of ingredients that is available in your area and so on. So you, you add the price at the top uh, for what you would pay for it in your area, in the country, wherever you are, and then also the inclusion rate on a dry matter basis and so on. Now, all of this is color coded so that if you put in too much or get out of the range of recommendation for that unit, for that ingredient, the, the block will turn red. If you use too much or too little, the block will turn red for the ingredients. So that if the, the recommendation is for you to not use more than 10% uh, PKC, then if you put 11% in, the block will turn red, telling you that you are out of the recommendation. Now, it also adds up all the, the different ingredients and gives you a total. And that total needs to match the required level of nutrients for a creep feed. Is, uh, the protein content is 20% and you are trying to match that 20% as closely as possible. And the method and so on, we will discuss with you. Okay, so this will also, that if you use 64% there, then you'll see that, um, sorry, I can't, do while I'm, can't change while I'm um, presenting. Okay, but yeah, if you, if you change any of these and the, and the total is less than 100 because it's a percentage, it needs to add up to 100. If it's not, that will turn to 93 or whatever and it will turn red. If you haven't got enough protein in, that will turn, if you've got 90% protein, it will turn red. 
and so on. And then you've got to add more protein and take a bit of uh, maize or, or something else out. Okay, so um, um, we uh, as uh, so the way way to do this. So at the bottom here we've got instructions. Okay, there we go. Sorry, it's still a learning curve. So yeah, we've got uh, full instructions talking about the, the the traffic light system and so on, and it also gives you a, a general method of which one to do first, and then and then and then uh, and so on, how to get to the get to a, a ration a balanced ration and so on. Then you've got ingredient selection. As I said, there are certain compulsory ones. Corn and soya is worldwide the basis for all uh, uh, rations worldwide so i've made them compulsory but then you've got other uh, so these are high energy low fiber sources and you can choose two extra ones if you're in, in nigeria you can do cassava tubers if you're in asia you might choose rice if you are um, uh, it's sugar beaten on and molasses and so on improves palatability uh, but you can't use too much um, and so on. Or if you're in Africa, you can you either use maize or sorghum. But you can choose two of those. Um, then you also got your medium energy, uh, uh, medium fiber sources. So the, your, most of your brands fit in there, or your better brands, um, and so on. You can choose out of those. You can choose one out of those. Then your low energy, high fiber sources, PKC, wheat bran, and so on. Um, again, you've got a range that you can choose out of and you can choose two out of those um, and and so on so you've got um, I think uh, seven compulsory ones and nine that you can select from to make up your your package and and of course you're choosing ingredients that is available in your area then at the bottom you'll see there's a tab for for creep feed wiener feed grower feed pig finisher dry sow lactating sow um, this Pearson Square, we've actually moved to the inside each of these tabs. Um, we also got here inclu a maximum inclusion rate. So these are the recommended upper limits of inclusion for ingredients. So that you're not supposed to put, if you're doing a creep, no more than 10% germ, no more than 5% um, gluten feed, no more, well, no maize bran. 5% uh, omni feed and so on. So inclusion rates for, for different ingredients. Then you also got why do they limit those uh, ingredients? It might be because the fiber is too high or it might be that it's got anti-nutritional factors. It might be that it's, it's low in, in uh, lysine. So different um, limitations of feeds and why they limit them or why, is the, why the recommended uh, limits are there. And then also the levels of um, amino acids uh, and so on. And they all relate to lysine. So isolysine, uh, you include at 57% of lysine. So it's 57% of that and so on. So all of these figures have been built into the, um, the spreadsheet. Okay, so that you, you don't have to know these things. It will limit you to to what you can use okay so um now to get a start when you're starting from scratch it as a as somebody who hasn't got the experience and so on um so of course with the creep feed is fed to pigs weighing less than 10 kilograms uh, basically from day day seven up to sort of a week after weaning um but yeah that, that's a weight range and you feed it ad lib as much as you can get into them because the more they eat, the more they grow if you've got good genetics and the, the less food you use in total and the, uh, the less days you take to slaughter weight and all of those good things that make you more profit. <clears throat> okay, so um, to, to get a start for this uh, uh, spreadsheet, you, we use a Pearson square. Now, this thing is a bit of a um, a, a difficult thing to get your head around, but we've written formulas in here that work out the answer. All you have to do is to select two of your chosen energy sources. So if you used corn, then it puts in 8% there. If you put in uh, cassava tubers, then you'll see that the cassava tubers 
uh, is is uh, 2.6. Now this is crude protein uh, uh, content. Guys, in in uh, ruminant ration balancing, you work on energy because that is the my, the first limiting nutrient, um, and it's not protein because uh, ruminants have a built-in protein factory in microbial protein. So it's a, the, the microbes that break down the grass to, to uh, form that they can absorb, but the, the microbes move with the food, their bodies is protein, they provide protein for the cow. So the first limiting nutrient is energy in ruminant feeding, but in pigs and monogastrics, the first limiting nutrient is protein because they do not have a built-in protein factory and to put on meat, meat is protein, all your enzymes are protein, all your hormones are protein, it in, uh, protein is by far the most important nutrient and the first one that becomes limiting. Okay, so we take our main energy source. Um, let's sort of, uh, well, we did this with uh, corn um, or maize, same thing. And then your, your main protein source. And again, I've taken uh, soya here, but you could have taken blood meal if it's allowed in your country. In Botswana, you're not allowed to use any animal protein and so on, or peas, uh, field peas, or you can peanut meal and or, and or soya bean full fat or, or uh, soya uh, meal um, and so on. And as, but if you choose one, it will put the protein value there. Now, how a Pearson square works, you, you put the, those two values in there and the required, you want for a creep feed, we said we want 20% protein to in, in the diet. And what it does is you, you subtract, you get the difference between 47 and 20. And the difference is 27. And the difference between 8 and 20, there's no negative or positives in front of these. The difference between 8 and 20 is 12. Then you get a total for it. So the those two together is 39. And if you take 12 over 39 times 100 on 1, it gives you 30%. And this 30% relates to soya, not to maize. So even though you, you, you're working across, this bottom one relates to soya, not to maize. The top one relates to the corn. So, but, so if you put that in, you've used your 100% and you can't add in dicalcium phosphate and lysine and all others. So what you do is you take a bit of your that we're working on protein, so we keep that, but we steal a bit from the energy source. We take 20% off it, and that gives you sort of an amount that you can now add the other ingredients. And this is just a starting point for your spreadsheet. So then you add that into under your maize, and you add that under your soya, and then you start um, working on getting staying within the recommended range so keeping this ingredients that you use in the green and then uh, that if you just add those two then your your dicals your phosphorus and your calcium is going to be low and your lysine will be low your methionine everything will these will be red your protein will be sort of just about spot on your energy levels uh, uh, in in met um, metabolizable energy will also be low and then you start getting them green. Now, the, the method we use, we use the instructions here. So after you've sort of done those things with, this, with the um, Pearson square, the first thing you then balance after uh, you've put in those two figures in your spreadsheet is you balance your phosphorus. Now, phosphorus is very expensive. Costs in Botswana, it costs about eight pula a kilo, where lime cost one pula a kilo. So it's, it's something that's expensive. So you want to match the, the requirement more exactly, even if it's green, if there's a bit extra, try and knock it back to the bare minimum that qualifies, if that still gives you a green and so on. So you, you do your, now phosphor or uh, dicalcium phosphate or DCP has got calcium and phosphate. So it raises both of those, but um, until you reach the, the phosphate level that's required. Then the extra bit of uh, uh, calcium that you need, you do by adding lime, because lime is a cheap source of calcium, and now you've balanced your calcium and your phosphorus. The next one you do is, is your lysine, and you add lysine in the form of, let me just sort of go there, let me show you. 
So here we've got. Um, so the premix is a trace element vitamin premix. It's not a, a premix that's got soya and the DCP and salt and all those kind of things. It's a vitamin trace element premix that weighs, you can buy a packet from Wisium in South Africa or your local, in your country, a premix packet that supplies vitamins and trace elements. It's a very specialized field, this trace elements and so on. So you buy a, a five kilogram pack that mixed into a ton of feed. Into, so it's five kilogram into a thousand or 0.5 kilogram in, into a hundred kilograms, which is a percentage and so on. Salt, again, guys, if you add more than that, salt can become poisonous. Even at normal levels, if your water becomes uh, limited, the pipes are frozen, or you get you out of water, or your tank is empty, pigs can die from salt poisoning, even at this level. But this is a, a recommended safe level, so we can actually lock these two fields that you can't change it, and so on. But So here's your DCP that you will then uh, uh, balance first, and then you do your lime. And then you go to your uh, um, your amino acids. Okay, so those are your two uh, uh, most important and first limiting uh, amino acids and so on. So then you start adding that until your uh, lysine is at 13, where you, or it's close to it as you can get, get it and so on. So then now that you've taken 20% off and there might be a little bit left, what do you do with that? You add it to your, your energy source and so on. And then if you still point something different, then you sort of adjust it. You play around. You, you fine-tune the, the, the inclusion rates to get to a stage where all of these are green and you all sort of get close to 20 as you can. As I said, it's at 8 or so, this might still, or 7, it might still be green, but... It's an expensive thing, so you want to get it as close to six as you can. Same with protein, it's very expensive. Lysine, uh, synthetic lysine is very uh, expensive. So you want to get, really want to get these as close to the recommendation as possible. Okay, so we, we, we've, we've foolproofed it. We've done most of the calculations. All you've got to do is the inclusion rate and the price that, that's, that's, uh, um, that it's available in your country. It will work out your cost per ton of mixture. So not, not per 100 kilogram, per ton. Uh, ton it works out to 9,000. Um, the ingredient costs for that would uh, at these rates here would be 5,000. So there are savings to be made. Having said that, you remember, you've now got to buy a hammer mill uh, to, to mill the maize. You've got to have a mixer. If, you, if you're doing 100 kilograms, you can do it in a big concrete mixer. Um, mixing on the floor is very risky because if you're mixing half a kilogram of premix into 100 kilograms, you will have to turn it by spade half the day long to, to get it, make sure that it's spread out evenly through that whole 100 kilograms. Concrete mixer works really well with a, a biggish concrete mixer and, and so on. So, guys, this, this is a, a, a spreadsheet that for dummies, not being dumb, but it, as, as less, least complicated as I could make it. Um, as I said, you, you already got, you start off with a, a ration for each one of these feeds, and then you can follow the instructions and the video to do this um, ration balancing and so on. Um, I, I will do a video on just one or two examples and so on, but um, following the instructions here, you should get close enough, and, um, and then I'll, I'll post some more um, instructional videos. Okay, so guys, have a look at that, and um, contact me. I'll post these on the group of the different countries' uh, big groups, and um, you can uh, message me from there. Thank you.